Um, if you, if this is your first time, try it again. In two weeks, Pastor, we'll be back. It is going to be real good, I promise. <laughs> I always like to preach when he's not here, and I, there's a disclaimer that if you don't like what you heard, it's going to be better later. I, and, and so today that disclaimer is here. If you don't like what you hear, it has no real representation of the church. Uh, but if you love it, if you love it, it's all, it's all church here. That's, the, that's love's way. If you have your Bible, would you turn with me to Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 through 8. Uh, for the past uh, month or so, I've been preaching down in the youth, so I've picked up a lot of youth slang. So if you hear some of that today, just roll with it, okay? They talk things like swagger and throw sweat shade your way and, um, you know, it's just real good stuff. So if you hear any of that... Um, and, and they don't really know how to say amen, so they're like, yo, yo, I like that. <laughs> and so whatever you got today, if you're new to church or you've been here a while, whatever you got, you just say it um, just like that, okay? Let's practice. Uh, so you say you like something I said in the service, and now you're going to say your version of amen. Are you ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Some of y'all didn't say anything. What, do you, do you know it's not going to be good? I hope it's good. <laughs> you, have your, you have your Bibles um, to Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. The Bible says in the Passion Translation, make no mistake about it, God will never be mocked. For what you plant will always be the very thing you harvest. I love this translation. It can't get any more plain. For what you plant, you will harvest. The harvest you reap reveals the seed in which you planted. You're not surprised when corn comes up. You're like, I thought I planted soybean. It's what you plant that reveals the seed. If you plant corrupt seeds of self-life into the natural realm, you can expect to experience a harvest of corruption. But if you'll plant seed, good seeds of spirit life, you will reap the beautiful fruits that grow from everlasting life. Don't be deceived. What you put in, you'll always get out. How much you work is how much you'll get paid, typically. What you put into life is what you'll get out. Is everybody on the same page with me? I like also what it says, how it says it in the NLT. It says, do not be deceived. Don't mock the justice of God. Somebody say justice of God. Justice. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your presence in this house. We absolutely need your help to get deliver this word. So I pray, God, that you would open up hearts, that you would soften callous hearts today, open up ears to hear. And I pray, God, that you would make me exciting and not boring, that people won't fall asleep in your service. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm not known as a long-winded preacher, so if you'll stay with me I, for about 20 minutes, I'll, I'll wrap it up, okay? Now, don't be like the young people that I was preaching to a few weeks ago that pulled out their cell phone and timed me. I said, I'll, give me like 10, 15 minutes, and this girl pulled out her phone, and she was counting the time. And she said, you're at 15 minutes. Uh, and I was like, okay, I better wrap this up. But that's, I love youth. How many of y'all know that God has many different characteristics? He is a good, good father. A very good father. Every good and perfect gift comes from him. Every single thing that's good in your life, it came from him. The storm you went through and now that you're out, it was because he pulled you out. If you're currently in the storm, he is right there with you. He is the reason that you're still standing, the reason that you're still making it. He is a good, good father. He is the God of love. He is the God of grace. He is the reason that I'm in this place today. Can somebody shout amen? Where would you be without Jesus and his love? I'm telling you, I would not be alive today if it weren't for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He paid a great price to rescue us. He is amazing. 
I'm so grateful that he is my alpha and the omega. That's what the Bible declares him as. He is the beginning and the end. He's a great I am. I've seen him to be Jehovah uh, Jireh in my life, the provider. I've seen him as the Jehovah Shalom, the peace that passed the understanding because situations that I was in dictated a different outcome, but he gave me the peace that I didn't even realize that I needed. He is the rod and the staff through your troubled times when you're walking in the valley of the shadow of death. I want you to recognize that he is awesome, that he is good, and that he is amazing. He's a God of love that rescues people. And with all the wonderful attributes that you could put on him as amazing and wonderful, he is also holy and he is also just. What I've come across is that a lot of people in churches stick to the love side of things. And they've heavily, heavily, heavily stuck on the love side. A years ago, it was fire and brimstone. Y'all remember it? It was fire and brimstone in the church. Obviously, they did a bad job of just judging people and making people feel not welcome. And then we had churches that were apologetic and they became like a, uh, I'm sorry that we, we chased you away. Come back, church is different now. And now what I'm seeing across pulpits in America is the leaning towards God as the God of love. And he absolutely is. He's not the God that stands up and says, you are the worst. I don't want you. He wants you. He sent his only begotten son so that you could be saved. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. But God is not mocked as a man sows. He will reap. And so what I want to warn you of is that there is a God that loves you. But if you step outside of his grace, there is a punishment that has to follow because he is a just God. I know this isn't popular, but it's needed. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. I, I, I am going to go somewhere, so just stick with me. Don't get too mad yet, okay? He's got to judge things because he is a good God. He is a good God. He is all round. He doesn't have one good part and then one flawed part. He is a very good God. And because he's a good God, he has to judge sin. If there was a crime committed against us, now think about this really quickly. If somebody stole something of yours or they, they punched you in the face, whatever it was, there was a crime committed against you and they brought to the court system, you would want the judge to judge this accordingly and you would want him to sentence it correctly. Are you with me? Don't fall asleep, but we're, we're, we're going good, right? Y'all, we were so good a second ago, but stick with me. I remember, and at the same time, like if you're the one that was accused of something, when you're standing before the judge, you would want him to do the right thing if you were not guilty. You know what I'm saying? A few years ago, I was uh, doing everything right driving. I don't always do everything right driving. Sometimes I speed. Anyone else? Sometimes I don't wear my seatbelt the entire time. Is anybody else that sometimes I don't use my blinker light? You know, I'm just admitting to you my flaws right now. What's the deal? Everybody feeling like you're so much holy. But I, I was doing everything right at this time. I had my seatbelt on. I was going the speed limit. I used my indicator my blinker light to turn right. And as I was driving with my hands 10-2 on both sides of the steering wheel, shuffle, 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 and not going crazy, driving normally the speed, my windows were rolled down. It was a beautiful summer day, and there was a police officer, and I drove confidently past the police officer because I knew that I was doing the right things. But all of a sudden, I noticed that he was following me, and he pulled me over in a parking lot, and I thought, this got to be a mistake. My tags are good. My lights on my truck are good. Everything's good, but he pulled me over. And as he walked up to the car, he looked at me and he goes, oh, you weren't wearing that a second ago. And I said, my seatbelt? Go, yeah, you weren't wearing that a second ago. I said, yes, sir, I was. And after we gracefully disagreed for about five minutes, he went back to his vehicle and came back with a citation. It was such injustice to me because I was wearing my seatbelt and I was accused of not wearing my seatbelt. Officer, if you're seeing this right now, you know what you did. <laughs> I let it go, I let it go. But I thought I would go to court and there would be a just judge 
and I stand before this just judge and I'm, she's gonna hear my plea and hear what I have to say. And so she says, Mr. McGregor, yes, uh, uh, come up to the front, yes. Uh, can you explain me what happened? Well, ma'am, I was wearing my seatbelt. That's enough. She shushed me mid-conversation and said, guilty. Injustice. We want a God that judges us fairly. Or do we? He has to be judged. He has to be a just judge. He knows everything. He knows everything. I wish that judge knew everything because she would have dismissed it. I was a police officer for five years. Don't run out of the room. I'm not a police officer anymore. <laughs> for five years, I was a police officer, and you wouldn't believe it. People do lie to the police. You just wouldn't believe it, but they do. There was, this, uh, there was a, a bunch of break-ins all around um, our little city, in like this little pattern. And I, I, with some experience and knowledge of people in the city, I guessed at who it was and we went to their house and we interviewed, I am gonna say interrogated, but we interviewed this young guy. And his mom was like, no way, it couldn't have been him. He was in the house. He was in the house all night long and like wanting to beat me up. I'm like, woman, you are 5'3", get back. Grandpa, grandfather, there's no way it was him. There's no way. And I'm talking to this guy. And he almost, this little boy almost had me convinced that it wasn't him. But our chief wanted us to bring him in and just to talk to him. And so we brought him in. And then all of a sudden he broke. And he said, yeah, it was me that stole all this stuff. He had a pile of like GPSs and phones and petty cash and all kinds of stuff in this bag. And we actually had to go back to their house and go get it and brought it in front of mama and daddy and grandpa that did not believe that their little angel could ever be guilty of something like that. You can fool your parents. You can fool the police officers. You can fool your friends. You can fool your family members. You can fool everyone around you, your coworkers, your pastors, your leaders. How's it going today? Oh, everything's good. But how many of know there's some stuff that we carry that we try to hide and we try to keep it in, but God knows about it. And so you can fool your pastor. You can fool your leaders. It's hard to fool your spouse, but some of you have fooled your spouse. It's hard to fool them, but you did it. And then some people even fool themselves. How can we fool ourselves? The Bible says there is a way that seems right to man, but leads to destruction. So they fooled themselves into thinking that they are right, standing with God, but he knows everything. I'm talking about a God that you cannot fool because he knows the heart of man. He knows what's inside of you. He knows your thoughts. He knows your motives. He knows the reason that you did it. He was there when you were all alone. He saw what you did when there was no one looking. He saw what you did when no one else was around. He knows everything. I'm talking about a God that has an account. He writes it down, everything that you do, everything that you've done, everything that you did, the good things that you did, he knows about it. Everything that you do wrong, he, and the things that you wanna hide, he saw it. He saw it. God cannot be fooled. You cannot fool God. Don't mock his justice. God cannot be mocked. Don't get mad, we're going somewhere, I promise. Don't get mad. If you're feeling conviction, just, just look straight ahead. No one will know I'm talking to you. Just look straight ahead, just straight ahead. In fact, just look at your neighbor and say, I think he's talking about you. <laughs> get that guilt off of me. God has to judge sin because he is just. I want you to understand this, that it doesn't mean that he's not a God of love. He loved you so much that he sent the 10 commandments. He loved humanity so much. He's like, if they do keep doing what they're doing, they're gonna be separated from me because I'll have to judge their sin. And so he sent the 10 commandments to say, hey, just stick to this and I'm gonna, you're gonna be good, you're gonna be saved. And they couldn't even do it. Then the prophets and the preachers were sent and they still wouldn't listen. And then Jesus, the great salvation, the great grace, the lamb that was slain from the eternity of the world, he was come in and he, God gave his only begotten son. And still people reject and God has to judge sin. 
God has to judge sin. From the very first sin with Adam and Eve, what people did was they covered up. They covered up. They hide it. They, they want to look good on the outside. Adam, bring, or Adam and Eve take bite of that fruit, the forbidden fruit, and the very first thing they do is cover themselves. We're naked, we got to cover ourselves. And then the second thing is they're hiding. They're hiding and covering. And that's what people do. That's what we do. We hide and cover, hide and cover, hide and cover. And then God comes in the cool of the day and says, Adam... Where are you? I want to let you know that God knew where he was geographically. He knew exactly where he was located. And he says, Adam, where are you? And God knew where he was spiritually. He knew that he had eaten of the fruit. And he didn't say, where are you, for God's benefit for you to say, here I am. He said it for our benefit to say, hey, I need to ask a question within myself. Where am I? Where are you? And everybody in the room, or most of us would say, hey, yeah, where are you? And, and point to the person around us. But God is asking, where are you? And then you got to be the person that says, where am I, Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, where am I? Because I might have fooled myself. I might have fooled my spouse. I might have fooled everybody around me, but I know that I cannot fool you. And so you got to ask yourself, where am I, Holy Spirit? Where am I, Holy Spirit? Not for his benefit, but for your benefit. He loved you so much that he sent the Holy Spirit to be the convictor of man, to lead and to guide you, but we reject the Holy Spirit. We push him back and say, I don't need you. And the Holy Spirit says, I just want to save your life. If you keep going that way, you're going to fall off the edge. I just need a, a course correction. But we want to hide it because that's what we should do. Hide it. But the truth is, if we would ever uncover our mess, if we would ever uncover the stuff that tries to, uh, if we just expose ourselves, you'd see that you weren't so perfect and people around you would see the things that you're not perfect at. They would see the real you if you'd stop all that. They'd see that we're addicted to pornography. They would see that we're addicted to marijuana, that we smoke just a little weed, that we just do a little bit of cocaine, just a little bit of heroin. Oh, that's not me, Pastor. You're piecing the wrong people. What about the lust after people? What about the lying and the stealing and the cheating? Oh, that, you're, you're, those two categories, I'm out of that. <laughs> well, good thing you said that. What about the little things? What about... Uh, what about the, 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 the thoughts of man? What about the not trusting in him fully? What about the sins and the stuff that we carry? The nasty thoughts that we have? What about road rage? What about the burst of anger and the malice? What about all those things? Oh, I'm not as bad as that person. Congratulations, he doesn't judge you based on the people around you. And I want to tell you that it's not your fault. It's not a sin, but depression has crept in. Anxiety, hurts of the past, abuse and stuff like that. But Jesus didn't just die for our sins, but he died so we could be healed physically, mentally, and emotionally. And so what things are you covering up today? I looked good a minute ago with a suit, didn't I? You thought I was really sexy. But what things are we hiding? You don't look good when you uncover that stuff. The devil wants you to continue to hide. The devil wants you to continue to cover. Have you ever smelt a stinky person spray cologne on themselves? He wants you to cover it up. Oh, no one's gonna know that you did that. Just, oh, just cover it up. You're fine. You're okay. The devil wants you to cover up. The devil wants you to go down and hide. The devil wants you to mask it. Oh, you can handle it on your own. Don't go to the front when he makes an altar call. You can handle it on your own. Have you ever said that to yourself? I know I have. I've sat in the back and be like, I'll get right right now before I move up there. If they saw me get right, they're gonna think less of me. You know what? Who cares what people think? Yeah. Holding onto the pew, white knuckling it. Oh, man. And the devil says, you can handle it on your own. You can fix yourself. No, because when you fix yourself, you just cover it up. When you fix yourself, you just mask the smell. When you fix yourself, it doesn't work out that good. It doesn't work out that great. But I want to tell you, 
that there's one person that can fix it. It's Jesus Christ. He comes in. And if you'll ask him and say, Jesus, forgive my sins. He is faithful and just to forgive your sin. There's that word again. Our God is just. He is just. All you got to do is get on your knees and confess your sin to him. Expose it to him. Tell him about your hurts. Hurts are not sins. Tell him about the things that you went through. And behold, old things have passed. And he removes that stuff from your life. He removes it. He takes it off. That raggedy, blemished stuff. And he puts on the new. That's the God that I serve. A new creation, a new person, completely different, completely different. He said, I've made you brand new. I'll remember your sins no more. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far I cast them out. And the devil will say, hey, bro, <laughs> I remember you used to smoke a lot. Oh, I saw. I remember when you used to look at them girls? Oh, yeah. And he'll whisper those thoughts, and he's the accuser. He's the great accuser, but when he comes close, he can't see anything because Jesus has washed you white as snow. And when he reminds you of stuff, yeah. And when the enemy reminds you of stuff, what business do you have remembering what God has forgotten? If God forgot it, forget it. Forget it. That's not you anymore. That stuff right there is the old life. And a lot of us want to put the old life back on. <laughs> he said there's a new life. There's a new life. Has anybody in this place been washed? You've been cleansed? You're living with a new cloak of righteousness. He clothed you. He said that you are pure, you are holy, because Jesus' blood covered your life. His grace is sufficient. It says where sin increases, grace increases even more. Where sin abounds, grace abounds more. I like what it, the rest of that in Romans chapter six, right after he says, what then shall we say Shall we go on sinning so grace can increase? Everything is permissible, but not everything's beneficial. I want to tell you that there is a grace that covers sin. There is a grace that covers sin, but you need to walk in forgiveness to forgive you. The grace, the grace, it covers you, but you got to ask him. Should we continue to sin? By no means, for we are dead to sin. How can it longer live in us? We are dead to sin. In this place, I know that there's hurts. And I want to explain to you, I'm not categorizing your hurt and your pain and your stuff with sin other than the fact that Jesus covered it all when he said, it is finished. He didn't die once for your sin and then die again for your healing and then die again for your mental stuff. He died all at once for it all. And so I want to put it all together. If there's things in your life that look like that, you've been covering yourself, you got to expose it to the sun. If there's stuff like that in your life, you got to give it to him. If there's hurts and pains in your life, you got to give it to him. Don't act like everything's all right. He wants to deliver you. God can't forgive sins that we keep secret. And he can't heal hurts that we hide. He can't heal the hurt that you hide. And he can't forgive the sin that you have not confessed. It is with a mouth confession. It is with a mouth confession. 
Here in a moment, the only thing that can hold you back is pride, and pride is the coverer of things. It's the coverer of sin, and it's a facade, and it's fake, and when you stand before God with pride that covered you, he will say, depart from me, I never knew you. Man, listen to this guy that made it to stand before God, and God said, depart from me, I don't know who you are. And this guy said, but I cast out devils in your name. Raise your hand if you're that spiritual that you've done that so far. I healed the sick in your name. I raised the dead in your name. Raise your hand if you've raised the dead. That sounds like a pretty powerful guy, but it sounds like he might have covered his, his stuff with pride. Because the only way that you're gonna make it is to expose it to the sun. Back in the day, they used to take pictures with a, pole, with a camera that had a film in it, y'all remember? What happened when you opened that film? It ruined everything. And so God has been taking pictures of your life since the day you were born. All the nasty stuff that you don't want anybody to know, it's on that recorder. But I wanna tell you, if you'll come to the S-O-N, he'll expose it to the sun and it will be ruined. <laughs> Forgiveness and healing today. Forgiveness and healing. Brandon, I want you to sing a couple of lines of that. And I want us all just to pray just for a moment in this place. You see hope. I see There's some things that you need to expose to the King of Kings, Jesus. I want you just to go ahead and stand up on your feet right where you are boldly. If there is a need in your life right now, you need financial breakthrough, I want you to stand up boldly and just come to the front. If there's something that you need healing from, shame of the past, hurts of the past, if there's a loved one that needs saved in your life, if there's some, whatever the need is, I wanna tell you that the King of Kings is here. Jesus, the one whose hands were stretched on the cross, the one who took the nails in his hands and his feet and took the crown of thorns on his head and the pierced his side with a sword I want to tell you that he is here today and he is the one that can wash it clean and he is the one that carries the load he is the one that carries your burden he is the answer he is the answer if that's you today I want you to come come on right now right now right now